I saw this on Amazon and I was like, that would make an interesting video. And then Linus actually did a video on it the same day I bought it. So I'm going to preface this. This is the exact same product that basically Linus just did a review of, but I have not watched this video. I have no idea what he had to say about it. I just thought it was cool based off of razor concept and I wanted to try it out. So I spent 500 bucks of my own money to give this a shot. The Fantex G360A PC case features a mesh front panel for ample airflow, room for full length GPUs up to 400 millimeters long, 360 millimeter radiator support, and integrated DRGB lighting compatible with all motherboard RGB lighting controllers. To see the full list of specs and colors available, follow the link in the description below. So what this is right here, it's from a, a brand called Team G, T-E-A-M-G-E-E. -E -E. Basically it's a dual 13.3 inch full HD IPS display uh, that turns any laptop into a triple monitor. Now it actually says it works between 13 inch and 17 inch laptops. So I have my Lenovo Legion here because it's a 15 inch, but this is pretty much what we've been using for handling all of our 3D prints and stuff, like bringing the models in here, converting them, the STLs and whatnot to, uh, you know, the SD cards to put them on the printers and off we go. But I thought that this was a neat concept because a few years back, maybe for four years ago or so, Razer unveiled a concept laptop at uh, CES, and, or maybe it was Computex, doesn't matter. I think it was CES actually, where they had a laptop screen that opened up and folded out into a triple monitor setup. Fun fact, that ended up being stolen during the event, and I don't know if they ever found it back or that was a gimmick or a stunt or what, but anyway, it got stolen during the event and it's not something that they ever came out with. It was kind of one of those neat like, you see some neat concept cars, but they never actually make it to market. The same thing happened with that. So I think this company was kind of inspired by that. And um, yeah, so we're gonna check it out today and see if it works, how well it works. Do the screens just suck? And which means could you then take a laptop and turn it into a fairly decent workstation by having triple monitors? My first impressions of the box, I've not opened it yet. As you can see, it's still sealed. I wanted to do all of this on camera. Um, so it's, it's completely, like raw and off the cuff of my experiences on this, but this is heavy. This is actually very heavy. So first and foremost, if you're gonna start carrying this around, it's gonna easily double the weight of your setup. It is way heavier than the laptop. So that's one thing to point out. The packaging seems decent. The price on this, 600. I spent $600 on this. $600 on this. Anyway, they have a dual setup, which basically it's just another single panel that turns your current panel into an extra, so you have two panels instead of three. I want the triple setup. They have a 12 inch triple for 399 or the 13.3 inch triple for 600. So yeah, I spent more on this than I realized. So you better not suck or I'm gonna be mad because <laughs> I then don't know what I would do with it other than have it count as a little bit of a tax write off, which honestly 600 bucks doesn't make a difference. How is that in there so tight? Oh wait. Ooh, it's upside down, everything just flopped out. <laughs> the packaging is actually pretty nice. Okay, so here is, geez, it's so heavy. Why is it so heavy? Phil, feel, feel that. Why is it so heavy? Yeah, it's like a whole laptop. It's heavier than a laptop. All right, so we got that. Um, this is your one cable for dual displays. So it looks like we got a kind of a quick start guide here on how to set everything up. We have a charger brick, 0.5 amp max. We've got a dual sided USB-C. Uh, one of them's a 90. This is designed for going into your laptop. That way it's not sticking straight out. We've got two of those because two monitors, I assume. Or we've got this double USB-A to a USB-C plug. So I'm assuming they're giving us different types of plugs depending on, they have to account for all the laptops, right? Not all of them are gonna be USB-C. I think in terms of being as latency free as possible, you'd wanna use USB-C over a USB 3.0. Um, but you know, 3.1, depending on the plug, isn't always faster than a standard 3.0 USB-A anyway. So let's kind of take a look at what we get here. This is designed to clamp on to the device. That's a. I need this in like a Pomeranian now. <laughs> yeah, and your Starbucks. <laughs> <laughs> I'm always gonna have my Starbucks. Yeah, I mean, exactly. I'm a white girl. I don't do that. Okay, so this is just some sort of like a neoprene sleeve. Okay, so it's got a screen protector dealy on here now. I'm not gonna take that off just yet. 
Don't squeeze, don't pierce, remove the protection film and the closing sequence. One and then two. Okay, so the very specific order. So, that way, and then that way. That's a real brushed metal right there. And then it's got this kickstand because it's gonna add a bunch of weight, especially if it's clamping onto your current monitor. We've got this little knob here that allows us to adjust the angle. And then we can tighten that up. That way if you have your monitor angle like that, there you go. Clearly it needs to be a little bit longer. So anyway, let me go ahead and just close this back up because I need to attach this to the panel first. And they close up this way. So far it's a little bit cumbersome if you're gonna be setting this up, but I guess it's the kind of thing like if you use it a bunch, you'd get used to it, right? I'm not a fan of the way that the screen stays exposed when it's closed up. So the only thing protecting the screen is gonna be this guy. This is hard right here. Like this is fairly rigid, padded on one side, soft material on the other that's touching the screen. So this will offer some protection. So this is just spring-loaded, and then it is intended to go on the back of the panel. Like that. So the kickstand is actually supporting the screen now, because without it, with that extra weight, See, depending on the angle you want to go at, like if you're more upright, the Lenovo's hinge is actually strong enough to handle that. So we are now kickstand up. We now have a triple monitor that I now have to power up somehow. So let me take a look at the guide real quick. <laughs> so this is saying that, according to the quick start guide here, it says if your laptop can provide five volt, two amp power supply via USB-C port, then only one USB-C cable to USB-C cable will be needed to connect the USB type C port of P2 Pro and laptop. You need item one and item four. So because this has a USB-C PD charging port here for like, you know, charging through USB-C, this should be able to provide plenty of power to the, uh, the, the panels here. So I shouldn't need the second one is essentially what they're saying. So if we make this nice and neat like that, I should be able to just plug this in right there. Oh yeah, now we have a red light. But what is the PD plug right there? There is a uh, micro SD card right here, which we're assuming maybe has drivers and stuff on there. Oh, there we go. Setting up device, SIM SMI USB display. What? Is it really gonna be that simple in, plug, in like plug and play? Does that also show up as a, oh yeah, the SF card, look at that. So Windows OS, let's just run the application. Wait, I think it did it already on its own. Yeah. Yeah, uninstall. It, it's already... Oh my God, that was like probably the simplest setup I think of anything I've ever used. They're set to duplicate display, but let me fix that. Are they 30 hertz panels though? That's gonna suck if they're 30. I guess if you're just using it as some sort of an extended type of desktop, it won't matter so much, but... All right, so how long does it take once I hit the button for them to... So it's gonna pop that up automatically because it's seeing it as an external storage. Yeah, that's not too bad, actually. Literally nothing is adjusting the backlighting brightness. Oh, it says 60. Maybe it only feels like crap because this is at 144. What do you want to bet? Like, this is, pro this is actually probably 60. It yeah. just feels wrong because it's next to a 144 hertz panel. So that's gotta be what it is. Okay, so they are 60 hertz. Disregard everything I said about that. They are 8-bit. Now, okay, why would somebody want this? That's, that's the other thing. So the, the approach we kind of use with products around here is, okay, it, it's sort of like a three-part deal. One, the first thing is, does it do what it's designed to do? Like, okay, here's what it says it can do, does it do it? That, that's kind of a given, that, that's, not that's not even subjective, that's objective right there. Does it do what it's supposed to do? Yes, it has turned my 15-inch panel, laptop, into a triple panel display. I have now, two 13.3 inch panels that are independent of each other that I can you know, take a program 
and uh, like let's just say heaven here, right? And I can now move stuff around, no problem. That it does. What, ooh, dude, the the ghost thing's really bad. First of all, it's, it's just refresh rate and response time on this 60 hertz with probably like I bet you this is like a 10 millisecond response time or more. It's pretty ghosty. Like that's fine. That's that's pretty ghosty. Anyway, it objectively extends my display like I would want. The next thing is, it does that thing now, how would I use that thing? So what would I do with this? Let's just say for instance, and I have absolutely been in this scenario multiple times. There's, there's a bunch of use cases we could actually use this for. One, for editing, this wouldn't, this would be nice if we didn't want to travel to a show and carry an external display with us which is something Phil has done multiple times since we've gone to CES and, and whatever else. He would have a, an extra panel that we'd carry in a box on a plane, a big old giant thing, and we'd plug it into the to USB, uh, not USB, but the HDMI or display port or whatever on the panel or the mini PC or whatever that we'd build. Although we would not be using these for color grading, we could definitely use them for having assets up on. So you could have another folder up with assets over here. You could have maybe a timeline deal going over there and you have your color correction and main timeline going there. So you could absolutely use this in that type of scenario and be extremely lightweight in that you would have something that takes up the footprint of this and the laptop in one backpack, have your proper studio grade headphones. So you can actually, you would not wanna, you would not wanna do mastering of the audio on the laptop speakers. And you would then have a pretty badass travel rig here for editing. I mean, Phil, you've done this multiple times. Would you would you say you could sit down at a hotel desk and use this and feel sufficient? It's funny you ask because I've actually used my iPad with a clamp on the side of a MacBook Pro. Oh, was it a USB editing. interface? Yeah. Yeah, and then I had I did exactly what you said. Like I had all my all my clips were on the left monitor or the iPad, and then my timeline and the you know the color. And this is nice because this is bigger than an iPad, and you have two of them. I guess they're about the size of an iPad Pro, but and you're not jankily attaching an iPad. No, that's pretty solid. I mean. And it spreads the, I like that it spreads the force around. Yeah. It's not just attached to one corner. Because of the hinge on the back and it's attached to like three points of contact here, there's no extra like stress on this hinge at all. Yep. And the Lenovo hinge is known to have some issues here with how, how thin it is and the way it only goes up so far. Like it has had some panel separation, unfortunately, that's kind of reared its ugly head on this particular panel. But I could do this and not feel like there's a problem with it. So if we ever go anywhere now, we have to edit on the fly, this would be a, a neat setup. Uh, I also look at it this way. The scenario I found myself in is I go to some of these shows and stuff and I wanna do a live stream. The problem with a single panel on a live stream is I can't monitor OBS and I can't monitor chat and then see what my stream looks like, etc., all at the same time. So for instance, I could bring up OBS. I could even have like OBS going over here, could have like assets open over here and then could even have you know, web browser up right here or whatever, right? Twitch.tv slash Jay's Two Cents, make sure you follow. So like, here's my stream from last night, right? it, was my, it was my wife and my daughter and I, and we were just on stream chatting about like, what's it like being a parent of a kid that wants to be an influencer while you're an influencer yourself. So that's the kind of stuff we chat about if you want to follow my stream. Anyway, that's just one of the things. If I had my webcam, I could sell my webcam clipped on here. It'd still fit just fine. Um, this would be an awesome portable editing rig. Or if I had a game going right here, because this computer is actually powerful enough to where I could game at 1080p and then still capture with NVEC encoder and then have everything going right here on the side. Everything seems to be going fine now. Let, let's see if OBS can display capture it. There's the infinite mirror because I just chose that display. Here's the other display. I could see this being a pretty awesome portable streaming rig. I used to like going to like CES and then kind of do like a live recap at the end of the day, maybe a, a live, live stream where I chat with you guys or whatever. But it was such a pain in the butt because unless I carried another panel with me and then I have you know my webcam, and the webcam on here is not great, so I wouldn't use this for streaming. But if I were to have like say a small USB capsule mic plugged into the back of this, webcam, this extended, extended display, I wouldn't feel like I'm having a hard time here setting up for a live stream. So those are really the only two scenarios personally that I could see this working in our dynamic, which is be like an awesome portable editing rig for Phil, portable live streaming rig for me. I guess if you're um, using this for portable business too, you could have maybe inbox up on one. If you're a day trader or whatever, you could have you know multiple trading screens going. I could see endless use case scenarios for this. The third part, so we talked about, does it do what it's supposed to do? 
How would we use it? Does that make sense for us? Is the price worth it? Essentially, this is, I would say, $200 per panel, well, maybe $250 per panel and $100 for the mechanism. Maybe that's the way I would break it down. Because they're not two $200 or $300 panels, this mechanism costs money, right? So I would say there are two $250 panels plus this mechanism. This isn't cheap. It's not cheap. Um, in our instance here, you saw I plugged it in and it all worked perfectly. Right out of the box, there was absolutely no setup. In fact, we were surprised, like, oh my gosh, I plugged it in and it's just doing its thing. I couldn't even get the driver installer up because it automatically Windows installed the driver on its own for USB-C device here. And then before I could even open up the folder, it was already installed. And you can see now when I'm done with it, how fast can we tear this down? Well, unplug, pop this guy off like this, unplug that. We can collapse that by pushing this button right here. We need to bring this guy in. This guy folds in this way. This guy folds in this way. So now you can see we're back to standard laptop. And then we literally just take this, open Velcro. There's the buttonhole right there, right? So we wanna line that up with that button right there. Face down, boom, boom. So this, would be our footprint of our social, our, our social, our social media rig, our portable editing slash live streaming rig. And then this is the only cable it took to make it work with this laptop because we actually have a USB-C that can provide the power that it needs. Otherwise, we would have to use this guy right here with two USB-C-A or another USB-C port with this guy here as supplemental power. When I ordered this, I expected it to be like, Gimmicky, but I'm gonna tell you right now, this is this is actually pretty awesome. Six hundred dollar awesome. And that's one point that helps the six hundred dollars though is that because it's just a display, when you upgrade your laptop, you yeah, you're right, and it, because it expands and works between anything from thirteen inch laptop to a seventeen inch laptop, gives us quite a bit of you know compatibility there. Let me go grab one of our 17 inch laptops. Let's see what that looks like. So this is a 17 inch Razer uh, Pro. This is an older one. I think it, has a, it's, it hasn't been used in a while. It's a little dusty. I think it's a 2070 in there. So same panels. It'll look a little more ridiculous because a 17 inch panel versus a 13.3 inch panel. It's gonna look silly. But now here we are in real time for the, uh, the setup. How long is it gonna take to set this up? Push the button to expand it out. Oh, it's gonna be tighter because it's 17 inch. Barely fit. Actually, this one may not actually fit it. So that's a problem. If they advertise it works with 17 inch panels and it's not working with this one, this is not much of a bezel. It's all the way out. Okay, so that's a problem, right? It's actually the thickness of the rubber that's making it not fit. I wonder if I can slide it down. Ah, there we go. Woo. That's a little sketch. <laughs> Sucker is tight. But. Oh! <laughs> I think the razor hinge could hold it. Nope, it can't. And it's all tipping. Dude, that took a lot of force. I was not embellishing the amount of force it was taking I to know, squeeze I that down. I was worried that that screen was gonna snap. Nobody's been using this laptop, it's fine. I think if you're at the 17 inch, the problem is you're at its limit and any bezel thickness is gonna matter. So it works. This rubber is very thick. You can see they're kind of wedge shaped, so they're designed to really grab. This sucker's on there tight versus the other one. I felt it was a little loose on the Lenovo because we, the Lenovo size was kind of in between the teeth notches. This is just being held on by the rubber friction. Absolutely no doubt about it. So allow me to just extend these displays. You know, it doesn't look that bad on the 17. It doesn't, actually. It, it just reminds me a lot of that concept they have, only they were three panels that were the same size and they folded out of their own, out of their own hinge. But, I mean, the 17-inch panel might be a nicer editing panel if you're using that as your main timeline type stuff. But as you can see now, absolutely no problem whatsoever. It seamlessly worked. This is a high refresh rate panel. So once again, this seems super smooth and the 60 hertz looks terrible. But if it were on a 60 hertz panel, then it wouldn't feel so jarring. So yeah, that's the uh, 
Those are the three ways that we look at this. Does it do what it's designed to do? Yes. Does it fit our need? That's This is subjective at that point. I could see an absolute need where this works and I'm kind of glad I bought it because of the fact that I see this working really well. I sort of wish that these were a little bigger. I wish they were a little brighter. But the fact that they're IPS means they're off viewing this uh, angle is not terrible. I mean, they're not, they're not the best. Um, the film that's on these panels do affect some of, it has a little bit of a foil effect when you look from the side, but not as bad as TN would be. Yes, I, I'm actually looking forward to a scenario where I travel again and I can take this with me and then actually try it on the road and see how well a live stream would work because that would just depend on the internet at that point. I'm still really stuck on the 600 bucks. I feel like if this were 499, then it would be an easier pill to swallow, but $600, I don't know how much of that's just inflation slash pandemic pricing. Uh, or the fact that they always would have sold for 600. But the reviews on them on Amazon are really high. I'll put a link to it down below. I promise I'll remember to do it. The, I'll put a link down below. The, the reviews seem pretty high. Again, I know Linus talked about this. I have no idea what he said. He may be saying they're absolute garbage. I'm just telling you with what we've experienced so far. Plug and play works really well. Um, I only had to use one cable even with a standard USB-C. So five volts is not, and two amps is not a lot of power to have to submit uh, or through the cable. Clearly it's able to handle 1080p times two worth of resolution at 60 hertz. Um, I just keep coming back to 600 bucks. I paid the 600 bucks, but I mean, at least I have the situation where some of that becomes a business expense. So I have some return on that in terms of like tax purposes. But if you're using this for business purposes, then so would you. But compared to the 15 inch panel and especially compared to the 17 inch panel, I feel like going from 13.3 down to 12 inch panel for $400, it was $399, I feel like I'd rather have the bigger panel, honestly, because 12 inch at that point then, um, doesn't give you a lot of space or screen real estate to do stuff. Especially since they're also 1080p, it's gonna be even smaller resolution, smaller text, smaller layout. I would rather have the 13 inch. I guess it depends on what you're doing though. So anyway, there you go guys. That is the, what are they call it? The iPro, the TR screen, laptop screen extender from Team G P2 Pro. Oh, presentation mode. <laughs> For if you were to, if they call it presentation mode, because if you were then were duplicating the display, everyone sitting like around the table could see what you're showing. So it's a neat, it's a neat concept. It really is. I like it. I just kind of wish they had a bigger one, honestly. <laughs> okay, just remember to use the, use the kickstand because there's a lot of weight. All right, guys, thanks for watching. How would you use this? Do you think this is a gimmick? Do you think this is neat? I could, I could see me using this if I started traveling to shows again. All right, guys, thanks for watching. Link down below. As always, we'll see you in the next one.